The role of the city architect is to connect people and give time and space to talk about architectural qualities. So you don't have any city if you don't have people in them. So I think the beginning point is people. When we work in, in Scandinavia in general, and, and especially in Copenhagen, a big part of the competition brief or of the wish of a client is that we think about livability. You as an architect need to come with that to the table. I think one of the keys to great cities or livable cities is collaboration between many different stakeholders. 400 years ago, we had a, a king uh, who built major parts of, of the old city. Um, and he could dictate that I would like this and this building uh, to, to be made. It doesn't work like that anymore, uh, not at all really. You don't dictate anything, you propose things and, and then you negotiate. When we were invited to do a project um, called Super Keen, the Super Wedge, out on Nørrebro, uh, it was a very big part of the uh, process that we should do a lot of user participation. And we wanted to do a user participation where people were given actual power. We gave them the actual power to choose concrete uh, objects to embed within the new urban square that we were doing. So I think there's uh, 60 different nationalities living in the, in the area around um, Super Keen. So we wanted them to propose objects from their home country to bring to Denmark and put on the square. I think architecture policy is a tool of having a political mandate to go into dialogue with the different stakeholders in the city. And then the architect and my colleagues is trying to collect all that knowledge and try to make it into architecture and physical answers to the different issues and needs of the local neighbourhood. Actually, one of the things that makes Copenhagen livable to me is, is this place, this old bridge tower opening and closing the bridge when the ships are leaving the harbour. Uh, first of all, when you bicycle on a, a light bicycle, it's one of the few places where you have a bit of a, of a hill, so you can really give it power. And then it's the best spot, I think, for sunsets, in particularly in the winter time when you need it the most, because the sun will disappear in the water and behind the, the next bridge. So it's, it's a brilliant place in, in, in many ways. Fifteen years ago, Copenhagen was a very different city. The harbour divided the city up into one part that was like the nice boroughs that historically was built a hundred years ago, and then Amma, we call it the shit island, because it's, it's a landfill area. And if you look at now, Amma is the place where all the new uh, part of the city has been built. It's a very good business to make a city livable. Ten years ago, this could not understand why we should make strategies for the edge, for, uh, the edge zone, uh, they think it was stupid when we talked about how do the building meet the landscape. We started a collaboration with an uh, investor called Per Höfner and we built uh, the VM houses and the mountain. 
we experienced part of the city that was very dead. There was no city life. The main focus of our project became how do we create life in the city? So we asked ourselves the question, could we somehow combine the activity in a row house with the density of a 10 story building that we had to build within the master plan? And that ended up uh, being a project we called uh, the eight house, uh, where you can step out of your row house on the ninth floor, take your bicycle and bicycle along uh, 200 row houses that are on an inclined slope until you reach the city life and the city street. Design can be democratic in the way that each design decision is informed by the concerns of the people that are going to be using it or inhabiting it. The eight house and the VM house on the mountain, they look different because they perform differently. What we've tried to do is try to make uh, buildings that create certain opportunities for human life. So in that sense, it's almost like using the, uh, the architecture as a, an infrastructure for socializing. Man kan have boet i en opgang i 10 år inde i byen, hvor der ikke er nogen, der kender hinanden. Og her kender man de første 50 mennesker. Det er sådan en uh, italiensk bjerglandsby. Ja, ja, 100%. Og, ja, ja. Men det virker jo. Der er jo virkelig det liv, hvor folk står og snakker, og det er så tit, at man ender en fred og ender hos naboen. Eller... At der er den her bjergsti, som gør, at der faktisk kommer sådan et, opstår sådan en form for socialt rum heroppe. Så, så fik vi den her idé om at tage det sydvestlige hjørne, som traditionelt er det bedste, så det kunne man selvfølgelig godt tænke sig at bygge højt. Men hvis man faktisk bygger super lavt der, så får alt det andet den kvalitet. Og, og selv ved den idé har vi faktisk taget øh, og gjort til, øh, til Via 57 i, øh, i New York. Altså som jo er en ekstrem udgave af det. Så noget, der er 150 meter højt i den ene ende, og lige så højt som et rækværk i den anden ende. Så på den måde så er West 57 sådan en, den amerikanske fætter øh, til, til modtaget, vil jeg sige. By the end of the day, the city is by the people and for the people. So we need to tell stories about what a city what the city is and what it should be in the future. It's not only a technical exercise for planners and people with a financial background and so on. We need the big narratives, the big stories that can make us all come on board and, and, and share the city and take part in, in its development. Right now we're building a um, waste incineration plant in the outskirts of uh, Copenhagen with a ski slope on top. It was a competition to just do a facade for um, a factory and this very big investment seen from a society point of view into a new factory, how can that have a dual function? We want to give people an experience that tells the story of livability. I think the, the dogma of, uh, of dual function has only just started. Very often when we think about the city, we think about its, its hardware, the buildings, the streets, the sewers and, and so on. But there's also the, also the, the software, uh, and that is the people, uh, the economic interests and the political ambitions of, of the city. And I think we should think both in resources with respect to, to the hardware, but also with the, with the software. I think Copenhagen by now is, is well known that you can actually go swimming in the harbour. And that is partly because we have a, a hardware that would allow you to jump in the water and having clean water in the, in the harbour. But it was also because there was a political ambition that we should have this, this clean water. So we were asked to do a harbour bank to facilitate the new adventures of, of using the harbour in, in a different way. The area where we built the first harbour bath is called the Islandsbrygge and that used to be a poor part of, of Copenhagen and after we built the harbour bath uh, the housing prices was uh, going up. Today I think there are six or seven different harbour baths uh, throughout the, the, the harbour and it really has become uh, a centre point for, for Copenhagen. One of the things I think we need to be better at in Copenhagen and in other cities is not so much about the physical infrastructure, how we should be, build things. We know how to do that, uh, basically. I think what we should be better 
at is how to build the decision-making infrastructure, how to organize and, and, and discuss things in the early phases before we come to the solutions. So I think building political, long-lasting coalitions is, is very important. And we have a very um, direct contact between the political level and the knowledge that we create in the city administration. The politician is on ground. They are a part of uh, the city, they bike around the city, they do experience the city, so they know what we are talking about. I think one of the things that a lot of countries and cities could learn from Copenhagen is the focus on not only the few, but of the many. In many ways, that is really the core of the uh, Danish architecture scene. It is the art of many. It's that we do not think of the few people within the building, we think of the many people also surrounding the building.